Gwen, thank you so much for speaking with me. Um, congratulations on your new single that we're going to be talking about. But oh my goodness, I got to ask you right off the top: Are you like a throwback from sort of like the '90s or whatever? Because girl, you've got a a really cool kind of groove that you can feel that there's some pop, there's some rock, there's some R&B, there's some soul, there's even some jazz in it. Like there's so much mixes and you have an incredible voice, especially with the single that we're going to talk about where even when you keep sort of like in a, a certain type of a frame, you can feel the emotion coming out of it that just sort of breaks the mold. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So I do like to mix a lot of styles together. That's something I've always done. I just pick things like different genres that I like and I just kind of, it all meshes together in my brain when I'm writing. It's really cool. I'm glad you mentioned that. Well, you definitely feel it off the top when uh, we talk about the single Never Have to See You Again, which is so cool. But like I said, we're going to get into that. But I also want to ask you about how are you doing right now? Because as we speak, I mean, you know, if this was a different time, you and I would probably yeah. be sitting down somewhere in a hotel uh, with a camera and talking about your career one-on-one -on -one and talking about so many other things in person. But uh, we have to do this over the phone because, uh, like I said, COVID-19, different world. Um, you know, yeah. people are trying to keep social distancing. You've got people arguing about, you know, wear masks, don't wear masks. Um, yeah. Also, <laughs> racism is in the forefront in conversations that we've never had before. Um you know, how do you feel about all of this, and how are you dealing with all of this? So it's a lot for everyone. <laughs> but I just moved into my own apartment at the beginning of this year. So it's the first time I'm ever living alone, and it's during a pandemic. So it's been hard, like, getting used to that, quarantining by myself and being alone all the time. But I set up a studio um, in my apartment, and so I've just been – working on music and trying not to get too stressed about everything going on because there's just so much, so much going on right now. Has it affected the way you are writing music now? Um, I've been writing a lot of sad stuff um, just because that's how I feel, but I let myself uh, write and feel those emotions, even if I don't think it's necessarily like a bop or something people are going to like jive to. Um, yeah, so I've just been writing how I'm feeling, and it helps a lot. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, what part of um, North America are you living in right now? So I live in Oklahoma. <laughs> how how do uh, how are things there itself um because of course, I'm speaking to you from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and we're just sort of like yeah. some places are in stage three and some aren't so you know, it's it's a little weird. How are things there? So we just did a mask mandate, which I'm really happy for. But Amen. we've been pretty much back to normal for a while now. Like, I'm back working at my serving job. But we wear masks and we sanitize and everything. But it's still just, like, really scary. Yeah, like I said, it's a completely different world right now. But um, what's good is that music brings people together. And the fact that you've got a summer yeah. single going on right now, um, I know a lot of people are very much appreciative of that. We're going to talk about the new single in a couple of moments, but I want to talk about your career growing up and the love of music. Because you, you've you mentioned about all the genres. You've done a lot of different things growing up. Can you talk about where the beginning of uh, the love of music and writing songs, playing instruments, and all that fun stuff? Yeah. So I started playing cello when I was five. Um and I played until I was like 10 or 11. And then I just wasn't feeling it anymore because I really liked to sing and singing and playing the cello just like wasn't the move. Um, so I picked up piano and guitar and I was listening to a lot of Taylor Swift and a lot of punk pop boy bands. And that's what I wanted to do was write songs because I thought it was so cool and I had a lot to say. So I started writing songs when I was 11, 
and just continued to do that. And then I went to college for music, moved away from my hometown and came out to Oklahoma City and went to college for music and ended up getting signed to 604 Records. Now, I want to talk about 604 in a second because it's a very cool way on how you ended up being part of this great label, too. But what kind of songs were you writing leading up to all this? Um, They were, like, I mean, they were punk pop, um, sometimes country. I honestly wrote a lot of different styles, trying to figure out, like, what fit me best and what fit my voice best. So I wrote a lot of different styles of songs. So let's get into 604 Records. How did you connect with them? This is a great story. <laughs> okay, so for one of my classes at my music school, I had to reach out to someone in the music industry to get an interview. Um, so Mariana's Trench is one of my favorite bands, and their manager is Jonathan Simpkin, who is CEO of 604 Records. I emailed him, asked him for an interview, and he was like, yeah, sure. So we got on the phone, and we ended up talking for, like, two hours. Jonathan Simpkin can talk your ear off. But it was so, so enjoyable for me, and I learned so much just in those two hours, and he wanted to keep in contact. He found out that I was going to school for music, and I wrote songs and stuff. He asked me to send some. I sent some, and he said, keep working at it. You're really good. And I got a song produced, and I sent it to him, and then he decided that he wanted to help me. And here we are. Here we are. would never have to see you again. Like I said, such yeah. a sultry, it's such a sultry, um, uh, strong feeling, um, emotion, uh there are so many levels in this one song, especially the second you start hearing it, <laughs> right to the end, lyrically, emotionally, um, the beats, everything. Where did this song come from? And the layers, where did all these layers come from? Like, what's the inspiration for this song? Is that what you're asking? Not just the inspiration, but I'm talking about even musically and lyrically, because like I said, when I first heard it, all I could picture were all these different levels, not just emotion, but um, even with the music aspect too, there's a lot behind it. Honestly, it actually reminded me of a rainbow of different colors. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. So like, I definitely put in a lot of emotion in this song. It was a very big song for me. It was a turning point in my life. Like, I was letting go of all of these things that have been weighing on me for so long. And I was just, like, letting them go. And, like, you can see all those emotions in the song. Yeah, sort of like a rainbow. Like, it, it has a lot of, a lot of, emotion in it yes i fully put myself and my emotions into that song when i was writing it and then when i brought it to my producer we wanted the verses to be sort of like hip-hoppy and have like a hip-hoppy type of vibe to it even though the vocal isn't hip-hoppy and it sounded really cool. And then we built off of that. And then my favorite part is the bridge leading into the last chorus with the added, like, ooze on top. Because it just adds something to it. It's so cool. Um, when I added those, I was, like, so excited about the song. I was like, yes, this is, this is it. What's the fan reaction like? Fans, what have they been telling you about the song and once they hear it? Oh, they all love it. I was very happy with the response I got. Even a lot of people from my hometown that I knew, like, has moved away from there as well, and they relate to it as well. And so it's been really nice to get that feedback. Well, like I said, definitely congratulations. You realize, of course, because of the time period that we're talking about here, 
you could have literally a song of the summer or the song of the summer. How does it feel being part of this generation for that? Because as you all know, there are always those songs in the summer that we always relate back to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy. I'm honestly, I was really scared that this was like, I was putting out my first single this year because it's just a crazy year. But I also think people really need music right now and something that helps them deal with things right now because it's just a really hard time. So I'm actually really happy that I ended up putting out my first single and that single in particular this summer. Well, with the single, will an EP be following? Yes, it will. So when do we think we're going to have something like this? Um, I think in October is what we're going for. And it'll be ah. a five-song EP. So in other words, not only do we have a great song for the summer, as we lead into fall and winter where there are also big celebrations, we're going to have music from you there too. Yeah, I'm excited. Love that, love that, and love that. Um, are you going to be doing any uh, virtual performances right now since – of course, we can't get together for clubs or, uh, you know, other uh, platforms. Yes. Um, I plan on doing a live performance, virtual stream, after I release my second single so I can perform both of those songs live. It'll be an acoustic version, though, like with just me and my keys, basically how I wrote the song. So, yeah, I think it'll be and pretty cool. I what? I was gonna say, I was, no, that's okay. I was going to say, can you give us a little hint of what the uh, new single is going to be like? Um, So it's a different vibe than um, Never Have to See You Again. Um, it's basically just like a feel-good song. It, it's also a summer bop. Um, just about like meeting good friends and like being around people that make me feel good and make me happy and yeah, it's a it's a good vibey song. Fantastic. Uh, social media is a place to go to follow you. Where do we go? At Gwen Love Music. Gwen, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Thank you so much for the great music, um, especially thank releasing so much it for now. Uh, no, you know what? My pleasure. Like I said, um, incredible song. I want fans to get out there and pick this up, and you're going to love it. Like I said, listen to it from beginning to end. And if you're old school like me, listen to it, too, because it definitely feels like a throwback from back in the day also with a new mix hey. of what's going on today. So thank you again. Be safe, and uh, hoping that the next time we talk, it'll be in person. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Have a good Take day. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.